how long can businesses stay closed before it is impossible to reopen? The longer that we continue a shutdown, when weeks turn into months, doesn't that necessarily increase the risk that some businesses will fail? That was Republican Senator Pat Toomey in a Senate hearing on Tuesday. The answer from Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin? There is the risk of permanent damage, and as I've said He said before, the administration is looking for a safe path forward. Democrats, including Sherrod Brown of Ohio, said the federal government needs to do more to make sure every worker is safe. Well, how many workers should give their lives to increase our GDP by half a percent? Coming up as more churches and businesses consider reopening, what we're still learning about how this virus spreads indoors and options you have if you're afraid to go back to work. This is Coronavirus Daily from NPR. I'm Kelly McGowan. Over six days back in early March, 92 people went to a church in Greer's Ferry, Arkansas. Bill Barton was the door greeter. If you came to First Assembly, and, and probably a lot of you have, you were greeted by Bill at the door. Bill Barton died on March 24th. Mark Polensky, a pastor at the church, talked about his death on local radio. Bill is, was 91 years old has been at that door for years and years. We are, we are heartbroken, literally, over his death. And uh, I, I, it just kind of tells you how serious this is. And that is exactly the point the CDC is making in a new report. Just one church had confirmed COVID-19 cases in almost 40 percent of the congregation. Three people died, including Bill Barton. 26 more people outside the church were infected, and one of them died too. That was months ago, but the results this week mean there is still a lot to learn about how this virus spreads. Recent studies suggest the virus could be small enough to spread by way of tiny particles in the air, not just larger particles that land on surfaces. Which means that it would be small particles that can be caught in drafts and air currents and moved over distances that you might not obviously expect. That's Joshua Centarpia at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Can move more like smoke than like droplets. He says that's why masks could help you from spreading the virus to someone else. Centarpia talked to NPR's Weekend Edition Sunday. As businesses think about bringing people back into offices, they need to know a lot more about how the novel coronavirus travels through the air indoors. A recent study from South Korea's version of the CDC might tell us something about that. In early March, some cases emerged at a call center in downtown Seoul. The call center was in a 19-story building, mixed use, lots of different offices and apartments, seemed like a place where there'd be a major cluster of cases. But when they investigate, what they find is really interesting. That's Derek Thompson, senior editor at The Atlantic. He told Here and Now host Robin Young that only 100 people in the building tested positive. But they're all on one floor. And more than that, they're all on one side of the floor in one densely packed phone bank. And what this says more broadly about all of our indoor spaces is that what seems to be most dangerous are these spaces that are tightly packed, closed spaces where lots of people are going to be talking. And so they're going to be breathing in a lot of the same air. That seems to be the most dangerous place uh, where you can see the transmission of COVID-19. It sounds like they are saying that if you're in an elevator and nobody's talking, and you're only in there for a couple of minutes, as opposed to people who are talking for a living because it's a call center and they're tightly packed together for a long time, that's a huge difference. Yeah, from the public health experts that I've spoken to, I would say it's a spectrum of risk. You don't want to be in an elevator that suddenly breaks with four other people if one of those people has COVID-19. But loud speech in particular emits a spray of fluid droplets. Yeah. So people who are talking loudly, if you're in a call center, you are being paid to constantly talk. Uh, there's been other studies that have shown that there's been huge outbreaks in choral rehearsals. So I think what the public health experts would say is think about this as a 
spectrum. If you're in a close space with people that are wearing masks and not talking, that's definitely a lot safer than being in a similarly close uh, place where there aren't masks, where people are talking constantly. But at the same time, you do, I think, in general, want to avoid being in a tightly closed, unventilated space with other people if one of them is sick. You know, this is all reminding me, I was just reading that during the um, 1918 flu pandemic in Boston, there were fines for people who were called big talkers, you know, people who were just loud and emitted. So they had a sense back then that it was the amount of energy behind your speech as well. But what does that mean for like, you know, sporting events? Yeah, this is a really good question. I mean, you're already seeing in places like South Korea that are beginning very slowly to open up professional sports that they're starting without fans. And that's because if you're a fan of, of your team and they hit a home run or you're watching basketball and someone hits a three to win the game, you want to scream. But that very same instinct that is cherishable in normal circumstances suddenly becomes potentially toxic during an epidemic. And so I think, you know, I, I've spoken to healthy building experts thinking exactly about how we can get back to normalcy even before a vaccine in sports stadiums. But it simply requires not filling those stadiums to capacity. It requires queuing up lines that people can constantly remain socially distanced even if they are wearing masks. You're not going to get back the same level of normality in a world where normal behavior is suddenly so dangerous. Derek Thompson of The Atlantic talking to Here and Now host Robin Young.